Welcome back, everybody, to Passive and Aggressive. I am Dalton Johnston. I am the passive one. Bitch. Okay. He's the bitch. Wow. He's That's the, uh, Nick. He's the bottom. He's the aggressive one. This he is, is not. The, uh... You're painting us in the incorrect light, sir. <laughs> This is a podcast about gaming, sports, MMA, and a lot of bullshit in between. As Nick was just about to give you, you're lucky that I cut him off. Mm, yeah, and tell you how much of a liar Dalton is. He doesn't want to admit that he's a bottom, but it's okay. Uh, stop doing that, man. That's just it's not. That's just. <laughs> ugh. I don't even know how to handle this. What did you talk about? Uh, we talked about some work, work shit that's happening in both of our lives. A little bit of Avengers a life recap, update, and then end game spoilers. More importantly, the Avengers. Yes. Yes, we uh we talked about briefly like a non spoiler review, which wasn't really a review, it was just no. how much we liked the movie. So and then we went a little bit deeper into the uh Specifics. everything we liked in the movie. So yeah. if you so didn't if you watch the movie yet, it. it's your own fucking fault. Your shit you had all weekend, you had a long weekend and Thursday to see it, so mm-hmm. go fuck yourself, that's yep. how I feel. No excuses. So just skip this podcast if you haven't watched it yet. So, the whole thing. Yep. We also talked about Game of Thrones. Absolutely. Battle Winterfell's today, even though this is uploading tomorrow, yeah. it'll be post Battle Winterfell, but we're gonna watch it before. Yeah, this. we we have not seen it yet. We're yes. pretty much shaking in our boots. Yeah, hopefully my predictions are wrong. You'll find out later in the podcast. What my predictions are. Everyone's gonna die. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, also got- a little bit of a. Uh, there until what? Shit Why would you skip to the MMA okay. shit? You don't it's go like, in chronological order. I want to talk about my shit first. Don't interrupt me. There until shit in the bed. It's okay. He likes to party. Okay, don't go ahead. Seriously, that was just so important. Go I ahead, couldn't wait for the rest of the podcast. We talked about some gaming shit, <laughs> specifically Days Gone that just came out. It's a giant open world zombie game. I mean, that's just just a formula for success right there. We also talked about some sports, uh, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. Honestly, the craziest year in sports that's happening right now. Not maybe not year, but quarter. Yeah, slow down. How about quarter? Slow down there. <laughs> it is an quarter. exciting basketball playoff series. You can say that for a fact. NHL, uh, the fucking under underdogs that's, mm-hmm, what, they're that's what they're called they, they, they are winning which is cool nice change of pace yeah, that's why playing hockey seats. is the best because you never know who's gonna win the stanley cup it's a toss-up yeah so fuck going to state enjoy <laughs> <laughs> for the team that's if he has not doing anything yet you, you ever look up a debbie downer i'm not a debbie downer i'm a realist it's a, it's a dalton you ever heard of a hype man, man. <laughs> this here's a hype man There we go. Adobe is working now. Yay! We're live. Hi. <laughs> Mom. Are you high? Be honest. Mm-mm. You didn't smoke? Today? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's 3.20 p.m. <clears throat> this is what happens every time one of us smokes before we do the podcast. What? That person who smokes does nothing. What do you want me to do? Sits and listens. Doesn't speak at all. You didn't do anything either. What do you mean? I didn't smoke, so I'm good. You're about to hear Nick talk this whole entire podcast. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. Episode... You don't even know what number it is. 37, 37 bro. Uh, uh, Patrice Bergeron. Uh, Boom. Why number Patrice 37. Bergeron, of all people? It's only thir- name another 37 NHL hockey player. I don't do that because I'm not... That's I don't right. have any weird OCD things going on with that's me. How, does anybody else do that? Like That's how I remember numbers. Like, if I am I parked on floor seven out of the parking garage. Oh, okay, Ted Lindsay. Nope, no one else does that. I'm Did sure you hear the crickets? Do. I heard the crickets. I heard some other people. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I do that too. Gordy Hell. Woo. What's been up, Nick? Uh, just got done working out. First, wow. First leg day in like, <laughs> I'm not even lying, like a year. Like, actual, Seriously? Like a leg day at the gym. Leg day. Dedicated. Yeah. Only because I got this weird disease. It's called Osgood Schlatter's disease. Is that actually what it's called? Yes. I thought you were going to make something up, but that, okay. Nope, that's what it's called. All right. And it is extra bone growth that is on your kneecaps. And whenever you overwork your legs, it causes tendonitis, which is annoying and it hurts. And it's just like a fucking big pain in the ass. So one day, remember those kettlebells I got? The Onnit ones? The yep. 45 pound ones? Yep. When I first bought them, I was feeling pretty froggy. So every night I came home from work, I was doing like 200... Uh, deadlifts okay four sets of 50 and after like two weeks of doing it my fucking knees got super sensitive like whenever i even bumped it into anything it was like instant pain like unbelievable pain so i like went to the doctors and i was gonna get an mri and then they like you know insurance shit they're like oh no you can't do it yeah you gotta go to a specialist first and then the specialist found out what it was and he said you can get it shaved off 
which he does not recommend Mm-mm. because you're not going to oh, yeah. open up your knee at such a young age. Or just take it easy. So instead of like having a specific dedicated leg day, you I just, just minorly worked it out. I leave my leg days to like insanity. When I do a lot of mm. lunges and squats, and I also do just body weight leg workouts. But I never, I haven't really had like a a weight leg day other than kettlebell workouts, but not like anything heavier than like fucking maximum ninety pounds. So has your knee been like bad recently, or has that year no. of minor? It was bad for a it? while. Like it was pretty bad. I noticed, yeah. But uh, no, it's not that bad. No, it gets sore, but. So, so this did this through. leg day put a lot of pressure on it, or you oh, feel my good? legs are toast? <laughs> <laughs> I'd expect that my, much. My legs are sore, but my knee seems okay. Okay, that's good. I plan on jogging tomorrow to try to like get the blood flowing through the legs. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna watch you just. I'm gonna wake up completely re-aggravate it because back in the day, whenever I had leg days, I would not. I'd like be like almost limping for two days after, just because Dude, yeah. I probably wouldn't. I probably didn't stretch as well as I should. Back, you know, when you're younger, oh, I'm, un- I'm that, undefeatable. I've never thought that in my life. I have, still do. I used to play football. And but now I stretch. Every single time I played it, like, it didn't even seem like I was doing that much running, but afterwards, I wouldn't be able to walk. Period. Well, football seems explosive. It so, is. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of You've never played football. Energy. You've played football with us. Never mind. What am I talking about? Yeah. I've never played, like, a real fucking... No, me neither. Yeah, but you did sports Mm-mm. in high school, right? Mm-mm. I thought she did, like, wrestling. Then she beat up some little girl. Break her arm? Or didn't she beat you up and make you cry? You ran away? It's one of the two. No, it was, it, was, it was the first one, but it's two different. <laughs> the wrestling was not involved. You got beat by a girl in wrestling and, it, and you quit. That was elementary school. So I was close. But in high school, we did wrestling as part of gym. They called me the natural because I beat everybody there. I'm not lying about that. I swear to God. <clears throat> I know you're not lying. That's Dalton's curse, everybody. It is. He's naturally good at a lot of things. So he doesn't have to go through the perseverance of of the growing growing. pains of getting good at something. So once I hit the wall of mildly good and to get, you know, past that to normally good, I just can't. This is stupid. (laughs) He's like, fuck this shit. This is too hard. Brand new game. Now then the next one. I could have been a pro soccer player. Ask my mom. I was literally a little starlet. I was well, fucking last, running out of the field like a pro, and I turned around and ran right back say, to our arms crying. The last story I heard about you playing soccer was you pussing out. That was literally the last time I played soccer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than the leg day, only thing that's been up for me is uh, just post-PMP certification achievement. The celebration time. Yeah, I had like a week. I I told myself I'm going to have a week where I'm not going to do shit at, like extra shit at work as far as like studying for mm. other outside things, like updating my resume looking for other jobs or anything like that i lasted like a day yeah and i couldn't like not because i was gonna be like i'm gonna watch all star wars rebels at work and like this have like i'm running on my phone while i'm working and shit it's a desk job you know yeah no one gives a shit if you have a desk job you know exactly what i'm talking about everybody has downtime and shit mm-hmm. and uh it lasted a day because i can't fucking just not do nothing it bothers me so i updated my resume so it looks dope got my pmp shit in there i changed a lot of my like descriptions of my job i i added like project management words like scope oh you know, yeah like net chart scope. and little shit like that you know damn i'm so, impressed so it looks like way more professional and then i have not applied to any jobs yet but i've been looking and i've been looking at like a lot of the uh requirements and it gives me it makes me so confident because like, i got all these fucking requirements now and i feel like i'm i'm like ready for it because i like yeah, you're high. myself for it and you're on uh, your own shit right now yeah also my work is really trying to get me to stay like really you can trying. tell? Yes, because before I told them, or before I took the test, I told my supervisor that, hey, I'm taking that test on Saturday. Mm. And she mentioned in my review that was supposed to come in January, that's April, almost May, and uh, she said, yeah, there's a lot of promotion talks in your review about other possible opportunities. Don't tell anybody that I told you that yet. Wow. And then like after I passed the test, I told her I passed the test. And she goes, yeah, I told Jen about what I told you about the review. She's like, you shouldn't have told him already. I was, but I didn't care. I wanted to let you know just so you, you're aware. So hmm. I was like, okay, there's something there. And then yeah. I got a, you know, do you have a, a Outlook like for your email? Like where you schedule meetings and shit? Are you guys that legit at your work or no? Nah. Well, we have that like because we work with Ford. And uh, I got a career discussions uh, meeting team meeting and it's not a team it's me and the, all the upper managers so that's in two weeks from now so my plan on next week at work is just to fucking prepare myself like prepare myself that i'm going into a review mm. like i came into this job 
learning this. Within six months, I learned A, B, and C. I also created spreadsheets A, B, and C. I also worked with A, B, and C for certain projects and blah, blah, blah. I want to have all my shit prepared. And I'm also going to talk about how like my goals as like my career and if they can or cannot be together with the company. Because I can't, no hard feelings. I'm going to let them know immediately. I'm not going to like fake, just lie and shit. Because I don't, I don't want to get sucked in with like a little $5 raise or anything like that because I feel like I deserve more and I'm going to go get what I deserve. Sure, that makes sense. And uh, I'm going to let them know that. So we'll see how that goes. So that's, it's exciting and it's also uh, a little spooky. Not not spooky. I'm definitely in that uh, that intermission stage, I guess you could say, where you know, like you're about to make a big change, and you're kind of like almost low key reserved about it. But mm. I I know I'm doing it in I'm my head. A little tentative about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna let that allow that to happen because I'm gonna follow my goals, follow my steps by step process. So my goal right now is to get not spend all next week, make sure I'm prepared for the review, see what they say in the review, because if they're willing to change like give me a decent title give me real responsibilities mm-hmm. or just like a regular desk job and i feel like i'm like a an important contributor to the company I, I like the company itself so you just I, don't like being that i don't like being useless a number. little thing yeah yeah i don't like just sitting there I, i'm not content with that there's a lot of people that are and that's okay like people are and that's just not me i'd rather i'd rather be at work working 80 hours a week than working 40 hours a week if push it's to your limit if it's something that i like doing or if it's something where i feel like i'm contributing like I don't know. It's just it's just how I am, and right. uh, we'll see what happens. Because if they can uh, if they can offer me something like that, even if it's not necessarily like the most money that I could possibly get right now, but it'll give me experience step in the, or a step to, in the right direction, right? To give me even more experience in my in that project management field type mm-hmm. thing, then I might do it for like a year or so. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. That's pretty much what's been up, bro. What's been up? With you? Oh, not much. Uh, I actually took a day off from work just oh, yeah. yes, just yesterday. This he almost took like a, two days off because I was a bad influence. Yeah, you were. <laughs> we'll get there. Don't worry. So I took a day off because last week was my birthday and I didn't really get a chance to Happy breathe birthday. at all. Thank hey, you. Hey, what'd you get for your birthday, Dalton? Uh, well, getting there. Can you stop skipping ahead in the story? Just, Jesus. Like so last weekend was super busy. Friday was my actual birthday and I had to work. I had to stay late as well because I was doing all kinds of things covering for people that took good Friday off. God damn. Do you want to know how I know your birthday? Is it why? 420 minus 1. It's April 19th. (laughs) Yep. That's a good way to remember it. Where was I? So I managed to get home and I went to a party at my family's house. That was actually really relaxing. Was it nice? Yeah. It was actually really relaxing. I said, I mean, like, did you enjoy it? Yeah, clearly. Okay. Sometimes, you know. It's relaxing, but I hated it. Yeah, sometimes I, hate, I never well, hate relaxing. No, sometimes you're with your family, like not you. I'm saying just people in general, sure, yeah. and you're like, okay, like I just let like, get this out of the way, mm. kind of thing. I'm like that with some of my family when I'm like, okay, I haven't I haven't seen this person in a long time. I know if I don't see them, then shit's gonna be drama no, or yeah. whatever. And it's like, fuck, I'd rather just avoid it. Like it's nice to see your family every once in a while, but it's not sure. like nice to see them all the, all time. the time. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. So it was nice to see him. I had some people come from out of state that I didn't see in a really long time. So shout out to my uncles. Uh, and then the weekend finally came. You had family come over <clears throat> on Sunday. On for Sunday Easter. for Easter. Yeah, that was yeah. a whole fucking day. They event. invited themselves over. They're like, hey, Nick got a new house. So we should have Easter there because they haven't seen yeah. it yet. It's kind of bullshit in my eyes from the little downstairs hermit. <laughs> well, I will whatever. say it's probably a good thing for you, too, because... I had a lot of family come over all, all at one once. time <laughs> instead of them cra- gradually coming over on their own leisure so. to look at the house and all that shit. So Yeah, we haven't had a lot of time to breathe without having guests over or hosting people. We haven't had time to breathe. We've had somebody over every weekend since we got the house. When was that? March something. Mid-March. Mm-hmm. So it's been like seven weeks, eight weeks where somebody's been over every weekend. And it's not only just like a Saturday. It's almost yeah. always saturday why or sunday? sunday or friday why do people sunday? want to hang out on sunday it doesn't doesn't make sense to me. i hate when i hang out on sunday but early on monday the saturday before uh, the day before that i did go to my first basketball game Woo! as nick bought, nick bought me tisket tickets tiskets t- tiskets to the uh detroit pistons first playoff game at home against milwaukee bucks and Giannis antetokounmpo 
we got our butts wiped. Yeah. Blake, it was real bad. Blake played, though, which was pretty cool. Yeah, Blake played. We didn't even think he and was going to. He was questionable the whole time. He, he bought got, out when he was playing. He got 27 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. Did he? Yes. Damn, I didn't even realize. It, it just kind of threw it all together by the end of the game. No one else did anything, but right. we, yeah. even get to, we didn't even get to see Giannis ball out either. He only had 14 points. It was mostly Blake this. Blake shut that fucker down. They don't. They play different positions. I thought they both play small forward. No, Blake's is power forward. You were the small forward on the Pistons team. Don't you remember oh, when we yeah, did the NBA whatever. 2K series? But Come I feel on, like they would match Blake up with him. Like who else is gonna match? We with were him? at the game. I'm pretty sure they didn't. Who would? Blake? He matches up with Chris Middleton, who actually had more points than Giannis. Chris, in 19. Is, he's off the bench though, ain't he? No, he's a starting power forward. Blake's the starting power forward you for think? the Bucks. Oh my bad, Middleton. Middleton, yes. My bad, my bad. I thought you were talking Shit. about um. What's that guy's name that we got from Milwaukee? Thon Maker. Thon Maker. I was like, is he off the bench? <laughs> yes, he is off the bench. <laughs> I will say what I really, really enjoyed about that game was, first of all, like, I found the tickets on, like, Thursday. Yeah. Thursday or Wednesday because I was like, okay, I, I almost didn't get them because I, I, I figured you knew what I was going to get you for your birthday. I was did not tickets. even think about it whatsoever. Because we both were talking about let's go to Pistons game so yeah. bad and then all of a sudden the conversation just, just stopped. <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, it wouldn't take a genius to figure out why I'm just not talking about Pistons tickets. <laughs> and uh, I asked Sam if she wanted to go. She said no, like make it a boys, like, boys night out. So then mm. I asked another one of our friends who wanted to go. He didn't want to go and then uh, we ended up going and I got tickets on StubHub and I don't want to get like lower bowl really expensive tickets. So I was like, yeah. whatever. Mid bowl, decent prices decent seats all right let's go and then uh turns out it was in like the labat labat blue club which is like has its no own idea. yeah me either it has its own i don't even know how to explain it it's like, it's like a little, little section yeah concession stands right behind you mm-hmm. and it's all labat blue like you can only buy that kind of beer and then like hot dogs and shit there yeah which cool yeah and it was nice because it was like a section away from like the mass audience of the crowd Thank and that God. fucking place was Packed. The energy at basketball games is actually unreal. That's just because it's playoffs. That I don't think. So, I'm assuming man. so because okay, you I look guess. at the you look at the audience on the TV during the regular season. There's like nobody there. This was playoffs, and it got me super excited for playoff hockey when the Red Wings become a playoff team next year because of Iserman. Ooh! What do you th- What do you think is going to do in <laughs> one year that Dude, they're going to be all completely turned around? He doesn't. He doesn't really need to do a much to make them completely turn around. They have a really really solid. Core. You think just the motivation in general is going to propel them it's definitely gonna propel i don't think you realize the magnitude of steve eiserman for the red wings i apparently don't i don't think you do they he literally dug the red wings up from their grave the dead wings he oh, saved them he made he made the red wings great again that doesn't mean so that it's them. guaranteed to happen twice and he was the gm previously for tampa who had the second best nhl record of all time this year who also got swept in the first that's not the that has nothing to do with the gm that's the coach he the gm assembled the team that how is his success, the success of the team, completely on the GM, but the failure of the team no, in the no, playoffs no. is not on the GM? No, no, it's not completely on the GM at all. It's on the GM and the coach. You're thrusting it on his shoulders like he's I'm fucking saying, Jesus. I'm saying he, he's made amazing trades, and he's made, okay. um, he's gotten amazing draft picks. He hasn't like done anything Nikita, so far. Nikita so how, Kucherov, how is the improvement going to be so big for the team if guy. he has not doing anything yet? You, you ever look up a Debbie Downer? I'm not a Debbie Downer. I'm a realist. It's a, it's a Dalton. You ever heard of a hype man? <laughs> this year's a hype man. He is subscribed well, to the hype train. He's not say, getting off. Let me just say this. Iserman has made... Some ridiculous traits. For example, okay. Martin St. Louis. Yep. Do you remember him? I know him. Little like five foot eight guy. I'm yes, talking shit, even though he's taller, taller than, than me. You. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's oh, he's a short hockey player, and yeah. he, he's a he really really good hockey player at this time. He's one of the better shorter guys of all time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was the captain for Tampa for a long time. Yep. And he was super salty at Iserman because he got snubbed for the uh, Canadian Olympics, and Iserman was the t- guy who assembled the ca- gold mm. medal team. Okay. And he didn't have Martin St. Louis on there. And St. Louis publicly made it clear that he was fucking pissed at Eisenman. Was Eisenman the GM at the, at the time of the yes. Lightning? Okay. Yes. And uh, he... Uh, dude, once Eisenman became the GM of Lightning, they've been in the playoffs every single year. I hope you realize this. And okay. like Western Conference Finals and amazing teams. Don't put a tangent but in your tangent. Anyways, so Martin St. Louis asked publicly for a trade. Mm. And when your captain asks for a trade... And he only gives you one team he wants to go to, the New York Rangers. <laughs> It'd be kind of hard to get something in return, right? Yeah. Iserman got the Rangers captain, Ryan Callahan, who is like a picture, like a 
a just an applicator. Okay. Like a gritty power forward, but a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and a little bit more offensive. Okay. Where he was getting like 60 points pretty consistently. He he also got a first round pick with Ryan Callahan for Martin St. Louis. Okay. Why? It was like the first captain for captain trade in like 30 years, and he got a first round pick. First, yeah, first round pick. And then what did Martin St. Louis even do after that? I think he, they went to the playoffs. I mean, obviously the Rangers they didn't win a cup or anything. But yeah. And it was it was a good trade for both teams. But the point is, is like when your captain is publicly saying that he wants a trade and he's not going to play, and the only team he's going to go to is the Rangers, and you get that in return, it shows like you're a good GM. I suppose so. And he has been making a lot of free agent signings with Tampa since mm-hmm. he became a GM. Mm-hmm. And he does a lot of trades, something that Ken Holland is very reserved about. So I'm excited to have Eisenman on our team because I think he's gonna try. He's gonna make moves. He's not gonna be hesitant. He's not gonna wait patiently. I think he does both. He does, he drafts really well, aka Kucherov, Tyler Johnson, Palat, all those fuckers, mm-hmm. late round picks, and then he makes good trades. So. Eisenman, baby. Let's go. So, yeah, my birthday was real good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a great time at the basketball game. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. We both got a little tipsy. <laughs> and then the day after that, we got to watch a Game of Thrones episode. See, it was uh, last uh, season, episode two. I forgot about event. Oh, I almost Whoa! Started. I forgot about Game of Thrones because of Avengers. And then the next week, just a couple days ago, on Thursday, Avengers released. We saw it first day, 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, whatever the hell. You're welcome. We were like 25 minutes late to the movie. And it was Still just hadn't started ads. yet. Yeah. Those damn previews run a long time these days. They're making their money's worth for those ads. Fucking thank, this is going to be like Thank God for it. I'm highest selling movie of all time? It has to be. I think it already has been, yeah. It passed uh, Star Wars. Did it really? Yeah. Dude, well deserved. Well fucking deserved. It was a culmination of 21 movies. That started when? 2009? Yes, 2009 was Iron Man. 10 years ago. Which is kind of fucking ridiculous if you think about it. I was 16 years old. Fuck. I was 15. Man, that is messed up, honestly. <clears throat> I, is that, I feel like that's like the only... It has to be the first time ever, right? It was Harry Potter. What is that, how long nine, did that take? 10 movies? I mean, yeah. 21. Okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still going. This is just like the main first chapter. There's a lot of James Bond films. Like 16 or something. Yeah, don't compare. And it's the That's same. Close. It's the same universe. Yeah, it's like the same person every single time, just different actors. It's like yeah. sixteen Batman movies. You know what I mean? True. So this, there's I, nothing like it. You're right. Right. So you want to talk about it right now? Might as briefly, well. can we talk briefly about it? Spoilers yeah. ahead. Don folks. doesn't want to spoil no, I it. I want to spoil it because I want wait, to discuss about it and I want people to hear speaking, our opinions on the movie. Speaking of Star Wars, when the Force Awakens was first coming out, I was just casually browsing Instagram come across the NFL post. I happened to see a comment. It says Han Solo dies. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? Dude, did that seriously just happen? You can't always believe that shit. Because it didn't matter. I was. Un- I tried not to believe it. It didn't matter. It was stuck in my <laughs> head was, like a plant. You got you're unlucky with that. I was on Facebook the other day before Avengers came out when they had like the pre-releases mm-hmm. and the top rated comment on some, I forget what it was, mm. but it was like Avengers spoiler. And it said, uh, the Avengers meet up with the Fantastic Four and Silver Surfer <laughs> gets the gauntlet and kills Thanos. And I was hell? like, there's no way that fucking happens. But it had so many likes. And I was like, I swear to God, if I really got <laughs> spoiled, I'm going to be so salty because that would what? be like the biggest fucking... That would be hype as shit. Yeah. That, could you imagine? Whew. But regardless, without spoiling the movie, we'll, we'll spoil it a little bit later. Sure, sure. But the movie... I would have to say is probably the best cinematic experience of all time. Wow. Avatar was it for a long time when you yeah. really got the new graphics and all that. That was my favorite movie for a while. Like Avengers is I'm pretty sure it's the only movie ever that's completely made in what is that CGI or whatever the fuck. Was it? Yeah. The whole entire movie was. Like not like not just You're talking about Avatar? No, no, no. Avengers. Was it? Yeah. All of it? Yeah, I know Infinity War was, so I'm assuming Endgame is as well. I think the whole, whole movie? The entire movie. Was CGI. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong term. You might be. What is like the hu- the where you like really have high graphics in there? I'm about to look it up. Because I'm pretty sure I'm right. CGI is computer generated images. So like, you know, your three D dinosaurs and shit. Right, yeah. But the whole thing can't be it. Like all the actors are CG, you're trying to tell me? I don't know how to look it up. Yeah, I don't think you can. It, I'm almost positive I heard that, dude. I'm sure every scene might have had it, but I mean that's not unusual. Or it was recorded in with certain specific cameras that also do CGI or something. 
something weird like that. If you're fucking a camera guy, you know what I'm talking about. The whole thing is what I'm saying. <laughs> camera guy. <laughs> the whole thing, the whole point basically is what I'm saying is that it's like Avatar on steroids. It's, okay. The graphics are ridiculous. The, Graf- it's not a video the game. Setting man. is amazing. Yes. The fucking, the production, amazing, right? Yeah. The score was great. The music. Yes. That it, and it made you really go through almost every single emotion you really can go through. Yeah, all the, the all the personal writing for all the characters, their development was kind yeah. of like, kind of blew me away a little bit. I was surprised. Infinity War was Thanos' movie. Endgame so was the Avengers. the Avengers movie. Yeah. And you get to see almost all your... I don't want to spoil anything. But basically, you get a lot of... Uh, Fan service? Yes. You get a lot of answers that are made. You get a lot of... Uh, Superheroes who have always wanted to do certain things and mm. finally they probably get finally get their payoffs. <laughs> and yeah. Bro, one amazing sp- ending. One spoiler I, expect it. I wanna throw out here. Did you know that Howard the Duck was in the last scene? Not was he? La- not you know the last big battle. Oh, was he? Yeah. I'm sure they pre- they Alright. Alright, everybody. <laughs> if you do not want to listen to Avenger spoilers, that's your own fucking fault. You should have seen the movie over the weekend. Wow, yeah, what were you doing with your life, you might fucking as well just, loser? Might as well just shut this shit off right now because we're spoiling it all in like three, two, one. Yeah, we love Ready? our viewership. It's Woo! True. Okay, so first of all, I'm pretty upset about Iron Man. <laughs> Why would you be upset about it? You knew that it was a possibility, a I likely thought, possibility. I thought Cap was going to die. Well, he basically did too, so you were right. Congrats. Well, I also heard a theory about that. Because well, basically, if you, if you want to hear this, like the ending... There's a huge battle at the very end, right? Like they all, all the Avengers, they all go back in time mm-hmm. through the quantum realm mm-hmm. via Ant Man, and they all have their own little Avengers teams to find all six little Infinity of Stones two, yeah. in different times in the past. And it's very tricky because once you take the stone from the past or in that different reality, that stone's gone from that reality, mm-hmm. which can make all kinds of huge issues for that reality. So their main goal was they had to go back in time, take all the stones without interrupting history or interrupting anything there. Yeah, the whole butterfly effect shit. Right, and then go back into their time, do the snap, fix everything, then go back to every all the other realities, mm-hmm. give them back their stones, and then ideally that'd be really that'd be Just good. completely repair the timeline. <laughs> There's yeah, no it was called time heist. Yeah, the... <laughs> coined by Ant Man, <laughs> which was the odds of that happening. I could see it being 14 million because there's mean, so many yeah. different things that could have happened that fucked it all up. And it was just it was it was amazing seeing that certain teams that they had, mm-hmm. and it was also amazing seeing how they went in the past and there were certain payoffs like Iron Man with his dad. Yeah, true. Captain America with his girl. Yeah, and then you also got the Scarlet Witch, or not Scarlet Witch, Black Widow and Hawkeye reunion, which is very nice. Mm-hmm. You get a very heartfelt, 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 hard heartfelt fought Black <laughs> Widow death, which was. I I feel like everybody felt that one. I felt that, that one like, too, that and I only felt that death, one really. because of the the fighting when they were both fighting to commit suicide. No. I didn't really feel like it felt playful up until the point where they were actually on the cliff and yeah. you could tell that Clint was really struggling with oh, yeah, he what was about like to happen. Was, yeah. uh, Hawkeye looked like a fucking badass. It's true. It's true. He really did. Another amazing thing, Cap, badass. He's worthy! He, he had the Molimir, Molimir, Mjolnir, Mjolnir, whatever it's called. I got, I got a cap up there. I don't know Dude, if the camera's going to see He was it whooping Thanos' ass for a minute by himself with Molimir, Molimir. Mjolnir. Yeah, whatever it's called. And uh, his shield, which another fun fact, like when he starts getting beat up by Thanos, and it's breaking. Yeah, it breaks exactly how it looks when Iron Man has his uh, vision, vision, and Iron Man two or Avengers two. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So like two things go differently, <clears throat> right? And they're all dead, and Tony's vision comes to life, but yeah. he ends up beating it. That's part of the beauty of his death. Iron Man is he has to be the greatest Avenger. Maybe, I guess. I think. How about Scarlet Witch? She almost she's okay. she almost squashed him, squashed Thanos like a bug. <clears throat> yeah, she. I think she's starting to realize her true potential. Because she, yeah. she has like almost unlimited power, kind of like a phoenix. Yeah. One thing that bothers me about this and about the characters in general is why wasn't this just another Captain Marvel movie and Thanos gets get beat up by her? Cut it. Done. <clears throat> like, what's stopping that from happening? She couldn't beat him up. Why not? She tried. And then he held a power stone in his bare hand and punched her, but he can't yeah. keep doing that. I mean, he would have won 1v1 against Captain Marvel. You think so? Yes. I don't think so. I think Thanos beats 
almost any of them 1v1. I really do. When the girl power squad was coming through, they had Scarlet Witch and Captain Marvel and all those others. I don't understand. Like, how does, how does Thanos win? He doesn't. He had a fucking army, dude. A ridiculous mm. army. He had two armies. He had the army from the first Avengers and he had the army from Affinity War combined. You know, the it's the same war. army. It's different things, though. It's the Chitari. You sure? It's all the same things, yeah. Oh well, regardless, he had a big different army. like units, I suppose. Like you and I imagine, and shit, but. I imagine it's probably the best army in the universe, considering he has yeah. been on a conquest, <laughs> taking over all these planets, and the he would only keep the best one. It's the right? unsullied of space. Yeah. How about Thor though? Thor had a huge Fat payoff. Thor. He had a huge payoff seeing his mom one more time before he died. That hit me the hardest because I was Absolutely. like, if you like, imagine if your mom passed, like heaven forbid, mm-hmm. but then you had like mm-hmm. one day to work, like find, like talk to her one more time, like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd give up so much for that. That's priceless. Yeah, so it was an amazing movie. There was p- plenty of times where you were laughing. Rocky Raccoon was like a comedic relief in this See, one. A lot of funny jokes. In <laughs> yeah. Hawk was hilarious because you got Professor Hawk now, even though we didn't get to see It was see a little underwhelming. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get to see Hulk smash or anything, but at least he didn't die. So yeah, we he see- can still stay in the future MCU. I'm okay with not seeing Hog Smash because we got to see Cap fucking do work. Absolutely. I'm glad they threw him a bone. Once Thor got all God mode, mm-hmm. it was hard to look at any other Avengers right. as anything else. <laughs> it's, yeah, there's so much in that movie. Like, I'm sure there's plenty that we skipped over, but it's yeah. like a three hour long movie. If if you go, if you haven't seen it yet, when you do go, don't fucking get a huge drink because you're going to, you don't want to miss, literally, I don't know, somebody at my work, the only, he was complaining about it just because he said that <clears throat> you can miss like the first two hours of the movie and then go and then you'll watch like the important shit. But I, I think that that's just hating because and it's either hating mm-hmm. or you, you don't like a build up to a movie or you don't like seeing all the, all the payoffs for the characters yeah. on an individual level. I think they were there for the wrong reason <clears throat> then. If you're, if that pay or not that payoff, if that little uh, build up isn't satisfying to you then then you're just watching for what the action scenes right that's not really what the movies are about they're about the character's growth (laughs) right so uh some easter eggs that i've looked up for the avengers okay love easter hawkeye when he's ronin and now he's not ronin whatever you know he's not really called hawkeye in the very beginning he's somebody else he took the mantle of did did they say the name i was waiting for i don't think anybody said it in avengers but like that's where all the nerds knew him sure and uh when he's in tokyo because after hawkeye post snap he loses his whole family and then he just turns psycho he's mm-hmm. like fucking he's like uh logan wolverine when like he just like decides fuck it you know just kill everything just kill everything yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so he's like he's on a rampage just killing all kinds of bad guys all kinds of like mob people or whatever like drug kingpins and uh he's in tokyo and he's fighting this older guy with a fucking really really silver super durable mm, sword really really silver and i was like what the fuck that guy looks so familiar I was like, oh shit, don't. And I was like, did you see the Wolverine movie in Japan? He's like, no, nope. I'm almost positive that's the guy who played so like Silver Samurai, the bad but guy. That means nothing to me because I didn't see the movie, so I don't know why you keep explaining right. it. But that is the guy <clears throat> who played him <clears throat> in the Wolverine movie. So I'm speculating. I haven't seen anything else, but I'm speculating maybe that's like an intro to combining universes. Because I when I seen that, I got super excited that I saw Wolverine I was, was gonna be I was waiting there. for something exciting to happen, and it was just <laughs> Hawkeye in a mask. Was right. Like, hmm, but, interesting. Also, a few other Easter eggs. Um, the little boy, I think we already t- we talked about it in person, mm-hmm, but like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's speculation that the at the end of the movie when they're at Iron Man's funeral, there's a guy that's behind Scarlet Witch, and it almost looks like Quicksilver. So then, like, so Quicksilver me, from the X Men, no, from the X Men. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that could be like another thing. Is it cross? Is it like combining or whatever? Fox but it was. It ended, didn't it end up being a little boy from Iron Man three? Yes, it was a little boy from Iron Man three, and it actually is him. In real life. That actor. He's had like a growth spurt and shit. That's crazy. Yeah, there's a shit ton of Easter eggs throughout the whole movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like I looked like up, Howard the Duck. How guys? Howard the Duck's in the movie. <laughs> I don't think that's an Easter egg. I think that's just all the Avengers came at that one time. Howard the Duck has not been included in the dude. They have an expanded MCU. Avenger. Yes, he was. He's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Was he? Yeah, at the very end. Was he? End credits, bro. Get your shit together. You should know that. That's like your guys' movie. What is? I feel like you love Guardians. Not really. No, I thought you did. No. I thought you and Martin loved it. No. We definitely got to an argument before because I said I like Deadpool better. And you like Guardians is better. I was like, fuck you, Deadpool is so funny. It's funnier, but it doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty that's, I think that's how that <laughs> argument went. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> that doesn't mean I love it. Yeah, but I don't think that was necessarily a, a Easter egg. I guess. 
Stan Lee, when they uh, showed him in the 1970s, RIP, oh, by yeah. the way, yeah. he was dressed up as he actually was back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, he had, like, his little stash and all that shit. That's how he looked in the 70s. Of course. They, they the, would be accurate. I guess that's when he stopped being, like, a, just purely writing on comics, and he became, like, the face, and he started promoting mm. comics, and that's when he started, like, doing all the marketing aspects and made superheroes as popular as they are today. God bless Stan Lee. Yeah, there was no uh, end credit scene, so if you're going to go, don't, don't, don't wait around. Through the end credits, which I think is justifiable because if you look at the last like 20 minutes of the film, you kind of get end credit scenes. like You see what's happening next. Like I mean, yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming coming out in a couple months, and it's like pretty much starting off right when he ends in Avengers. Mm-hmm. And so, the end credit scenes have always like looked ahead to the next <clears throat> movie. I think this is like a symbolic, ending. this is the end. Right. I think yeah, they'll start Finn. the end credits again once they, yeah, once probably they on have homecoming. a new one. Yeah. Not Homecoming, whatever it is. I also heard. I also heard that uh, when they beat Thanos and all that, I think it's supposed to be year twenty twenty three that they're in. So is it? I thought they were just catching up to twenty nineteen because the New York events were in twenty twelve. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying this based off of my. I'm pretty sure the whole Sokovia thing and the Ultron shit was the two years later, twenty fourteen. And then I think I don't know, dude. Then. Uh, Thor Ragnarok is like a year later, quote unquote. But then I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. But That's the, kind of what I. Uh, well, no, because when they, Thanos came from 2014, and they they were st- playing Fortnite and shit, man. No one's playing Fortnite in five years. I don't know. Regardless, this is what I heard off of uh, YouTube. He's a YouTuber, Emergency Awesome. Mm-hmm. He has like millions of subscribers, mm-hmm. so I take his word for it. Okay. But I guess he's speculating that the next Avengers movie isn't going to come out until 2023 because of what? it. What? Which is okay with me. I think they need a break from Avengers after this huge one. It's not. But gonna... Star Wars is taking a break too. Star Wars is. They always take a break. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, 2019 is the best time to be a nerd. It's the best time. It's to also be alive the worst time because it's all ending. Yeah. No one else is ending. It's not really ending. We got quite a few weeks to go. Thank God. Oh, that's another thing I did at work this week, guys. Did real important shit. One of our not IT work. guys made a little Excel spreadsheet. Of who will let survive episode three of Game of Thrones. And we had a list of everybody. And all of us Game of Thrones fans made our list. And he combined them and he sent them all to us in an email. And said, the subject was Valar Magulas. And like the the, uh, the text in the email mm-hmm. was just the song that... What's his name? Podrick. Podrick sang at the end of the episode two. Which I don't remember. I hear a lot of people in my work have been fucking hating episodes one and two just because they're like... I they're all like- impatient. Same people that are not yeah. enjoying the <clears throat> Avengers for what it is because all they want to do is see people beat up people. True. They were waiting for all of these clashes to happen. It's supposed to be the biggest season ever, but instead they're just getting built up. And right. They just can't see. They can't look think, ahead to the future. I also think some people just want to be negative just because it's cool yeah. to be negative. It's cool to be that guy. I used to be that every once in a while. Like... I'd catch myself if I like I don't know if somebody like whole bunch people are like oh I like this movie but I get it's uh, why do you like it yeah name one good reason you should <laughs> yeah. like I it. would always be like that asshole devil's advocate yeah, for some would. reason but I've grown up you know mm. that happens you want to see your little <laughs> you want to see your little <laughs> a little bit <laughs> do you think you looked at my list for winter I film, think so right? battle winter film you had some bold takes you think Bran's gonna die I think. It's either the, the people are going to be listening to this after the episode airs, so they're going to know whether or not we're stupid or not. So right. keep that in mind when you make these bold takes, Cotton. I said Jon Snow is going to survive, I hope. I mean, I hope so, yeah. Khaleesi, she's going to survive. Naturally. Um, I'm not going to say who Do you have right any other, is going to survive. I'm pretty sure you don't know any other names. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't. <laughs> here's the thing. I think it seems who like it's going to be too easy. Who do you think is going to die? Easy. It seems like it's going to be too easy, their plan. Like if all that happens, what? I'm gonna be salty because it's not Game of Thrones. They're not. I have zero expectation that they're gonna win whatsoever. I have. A, it's either I think that the Night King isn't gonna be there at all because mm-hmm. they don't show him at all. That sounds. That sounds. It's about either King that, and he's going to King's Landing to get a second army, like fuck up all those people, mm-hmm. make them whites, and then come back, or he is outsmarting Bran, and he is actually going to kill Bran because Bran just recently became the Three-Eyed Raven. Mm -hmm. He he didn't master his powers And they only just told us what that means for the world. He's like the memories of the world as it is. Yeah, and obviously the Night King is just to erase humans, and he wants to make a a permanent winner. uh, So if you were the Night King, and you're facing this castle, Winterfell, and there's one person inside that you just need to kill, and you have a giant fucking undead dragon... 
Are you going to march your army at them and hope that you can make it in, or are you just going to fucking swoop around while their armies are fighting and just blow them up? I think he might let, if he is at Winterfell, uh-huh. I think he's going to let his army do work. And then I would swoop in much mid into the battle mm-hmm. so everyone's preoccupied. Naturally. And then he goes and kills Bran. But I'm assuming that they're going to keep the dragons there with him. Didn't you write down that one of the dragons, one of Daenerys' dragons is going to die? Jon Snow's dragon is going to die. Rhaegar's going to die. Rhaegar. Whatever. And Rhaegar. Ghost is going to die. All the direwolves are going to die. All of them? I think they are going to die. They're gonna. We're going to see like a white ghost. Fuck you. And then uh, I think there's going to be some crazy shit. Like I think they're going to revive everybody in the crypt. Because they have everybody going to the crypt to keep them safe. And I think the Night King might just be like, bitches. <laughs> you ain't safe. Say hello to the skeleton that's dark that's about to kill you. Man, that's, if that actually happens, that's so fucked up. <sighs> so much speculation this episode but i bet it's gonna be none of what we expect because also... that's kind of how i felt when i watched avengers like they just they, they pulled yeah. they pulled a plot out that i did not see the trailers for avengers were literally the first 15 minutes of the <laughs> film and i i love that i really do i loved it mm-hmm. so but other than that like back to game of thrones mm-hmm. i had so i have brand dying because i think the night king's just gonna simply outsmart him and i think it's a I think it's gonna be a shocking Game of Thrones death that we're not used that we're used to seeing the shocking ones, but sure. he's like one that you're not gonna expect. Of course, yeah, of course they can't kill Bran. Bran's like he, yeah. he's the end game. Yeah, and then also I got. Um, it really sucks that you don't know the names of people because. Jamie, Lannister, and Brienne, Brienne of Tarth, Podrick, uh, the leader of the Unsullied, Grey Worm. Yeah, the one that's hitting the hottest chick in the show, um, mm. with his. What is going on there? I need to know. What just, what's his downstairs situation of the inside? Like, how is he? Fulfilling it's called that? love. Fuck out of here! That <laughs> bullshit. Um, Tormund's gonna die. Tormund Giant's Bane. Giant's Bane's gonna die. Uh, Dondarrion is gonna die. I think you had Varys on there is dying, and I'm questionable Varys about is that gonna one. Die. How so sway? Crips, dude. Tyrion's down there too. You die. I have Tyrion surviving. How does Tyrion get out? Well, his he says experience in wars. Varys says nothing. Varys has like un. What is Whisper is gonna fucking sur- make him survive? No, but he can escape with Tyrion using their I hope excellent he does. intellects. I hope he does, dude. I hope. We have to figure about. Are wrong. We gotta figure out about his whole magic, the whole magic side of his story. I just and think his wizard and shit. Varys. Yeah, you don't remember. When he was, he was literally telling Tyrion about how he got cut and shit, and there was a demon in the flames or something. He's got he's got some some shit to wrap I doubt up. Doubt that they're gonna wait for this season to show that. Varys will be alive on Monday. Don't you? Don't I you hope you're right. I hope I'm wrong. I hope all the fucking people live. I hope the Night King dies. But like, I don't. What? I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I think Game it, of Thrones. That's not at all what I said. I think we're all gonna be very sad. <laughs> yeah, they're this, not winning this. this. So. <laughs> Let me clarify. There's no way they won. Who else do I? I have so many. I, pretty much everybody who is not. A main main character that is fighting on the field, I have dying. I think you have everyone on the field dying. Pretty Theon much. as well. Yes, Theon, Theon's gonna die trying to save. That's probably the only guaranteed death that I can think of is Theon. No, I think that guaranteed is uh, Brienne. Bron- no, the Bron- the same? flame sword dude, Beric Beric Dun- Dondarrion. Yes, I think his he's gonna die. I think he's gonna do something important to help. Maybe kill a certain white that kills a shit ton of, or kill a certain white walker that like made a cer- a lot of whites. And then, like, save somebody. Maybe saves the Hound for the Cogain Bone. The only reason why I have him surviving is because Cogain Bone. Mm. Yeah, that, that, he can't die yet. Yeah, so you are on the you're on the theory of the main purpose of Game of Thrones is, the, like, the Night King's the final boss, basically, is what you, yes. you have. Mm-hmm. I disagree with that. I think that Cersei's going to be the final boss because it's going to be... In my like, I think it's called Game of Thrones for a reason because it's the Game of Thrones. But we've been over this. The series is called A Song of Ice and Fire. Only yes. the first book is called A Game of Thrones. Yes, but but the okay. books are irrelevant now. The so books are the, right. The, the show is called A Game of Thrones, so yeah. Which, it better fact, be about the thrones. Somebody at my work was trying to act so smart. I won't mention names, but he was <laughs> okay. he was talking to, to my supervisor. We were talking about Game of Thrones, uh-huh. and he was like, "I already know the ending. I read the books." Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he said that you should have, did fucking, you ask him what it was I called him out so hard <laughs> oh what is it I was what like, is what, it what's ending he's like I don't want to say I'm like come on tell me and he goes uh, Arya kills Night King and then Cersei becomes the Night King and I was like yeah. he's like that's in the books I'm like that's in the books he goes yeah I'm like I'm pretty sure the books. the books are like on season 4 Game of Thrones dude <laughs> or like maybe season 5 and then he was like no no I read them I'm like oh really he's like what is the book called then 
And then he really didn't. He's like, it's Game of Thrones books, dude. And then I let it alone because I could tell he was starting to get, get flustered. He was starting to get embarrassed. I could see it all red and defensive and shit. So I was like, whatever. You have that effect on people. <laughs> You're a flusterer. Don't fucking lie about some stupid shit like that. that you're a grown ass adult. I don't like understand. you're not trying to be cool in high school anymore. Like, I don't know what the I get it. I used to lie in middle school. I, I made a joke when I was in. I was even a joke. I said, "Yeah, I, I was hunting him when I was in middle school. I, my first deer I killed, I dropped a big rock off the tree stand and it killed him and hit him in the head." <laughs> I swear to God, I, I swear to God, I said that. <laughs> Why? I used to tell people I played hockey. Oh, oh my God, no. that one I had to fucking. I had to eat that lie because. Uh, couple of our friends who played hockey yeah. in high school like hey you want to come play hockey and i couldn't say no so i played hockey and i was garbage Why would you just <laughs> went? you could you should have made an excuse oh sorry uh, i just my hips something. well i was already at i was already at my friend's house staying the night and Damn. he wanted to play yeah Damn. so kind of got hit with that one pretty good but hey i was very did insecure call, as a did, kid did they call you out like bro they didn't say shit to me then but the next day a couple of them said i sucked that's and, rude well, I mean, I was I got bullied a lot when I was a kid. So <laughs> it was like my defense mechanism was to lie about anything that can make me seem a little bit cooler so I would not get bullied. That was my thing. Mm. Which I'm sure that's a trap that a, out now. I'm sure that's a lot of a trap that a lot of, you know, pathological liars fall into and how they get there. Right. Which is I mean, whatever. Happens. The defense mechanism, I guess. Yeah. So good time to be a nerd overall, right? Yeah. Avengers, ridiculous. Game of Thrones. And then we got the playoffs going on right now. NHL, NBA. It has nothing to do with nerding, but shout out to all so. the underdogs from the NHL. Pretty Columbus, ridiculous. fucking Carolina. You have the memory of the goldfish. Capitals. Thanks, pal. You're welcome. <laughs> Boston's the only one that was. I guess were they underdog against Toronto? I don't know. They might have been, but they're like a, they were. They're a good team. They were the lower seed, weren't they? I don't know. I don't know. But who Should else was in the East? Columbus, Carolina. Those two and the Islanders, Islanders. beating Pittsburgh. So that all the all the top seeds. To no, the most shocking one to me was Washington. Definitely. The most shocking one to me was Columbus versus Tampa. Four oh. zero sweep. Okay, yeah, you're right. Like get out of here. The Washington one was shocking to me too, but it took it went to seven games. Excuse, Excuse you. That was a yawn, burp, and cough at the same time. <laughs> That's a rough one. <laughs> Jesus. And uh, yeah, basketball amazing. Yeah. Even though the Pistons got swept, I'm still optimistic about our team. I feel like it's only going to get better. Yeah, they got there just on Blake, one-legged Blake. So yeah, a lot of people were more hating on Blake, though, saying that he's injury-prone. Like, he had an amazing I mean, year, but yeah. like he's in the later ends of this amazing, uh, this huge contract. So the Pistons may have, like, fucked up because they got so much money invested in the one player who's aging and is injured. So kind of like what, you know, what Chicago did with uh, Jonathan Taze. 10 million a year for what like 40 points a year he wasn't aging what's was going he? on no he just sucks dick okay well you're right they should have seen that coming shouldn't they <laughs> you moron you got so defensive. <laughs> obviously you come at me offensive i'm gonna stay defensive that's how we win championships here do you think uh houston has a chance well golden state did advance against clips yeah, Katie they did went it, off they did their best that well that was their game plan apparently the only way to stop the kevin durant warriors is to bait kevin durant into shooting at you and hope that he does a bad job as long as you control the rest of the warriors You're playing with fire with that that though. is yeah it worked in two games it it's worked. not gonna work in a whole series no though. it did not you have to shut him down you can't just yeah. let him do his thing they lost in game six he had 50 points if he's doing you have to make sure he gets like only 28 or something <laughs> yeah green had a triple double <laughs> yeah and this is a this is a very pressured golden state team because they have been poised to win the championship for what the past four or five years now, and Boogie's injured, which honestly is probably a good thing because I don't think he's, the chemistry is there with him because he barely even played all year. But then you have all the drama with KD and Green and all the drama and the pressure of them having to win and just I like I can imagine how the criticism will eventually get to you just mm -hmm. because you're. You've been doing it for so long, and to try to find the motivation to play at a top level, game in and game out, it's. I imagine it's hard because, like, who do they? What are they? What's the point? Yeah, that's a good. That's a like, good. They can go. They point. can. They're first in the West, mm -hmm. barely not, trying. Actually, yeah, they were. They were second. No, they were second in the NBA. They were first in the West. The Bucks were the first in the NBA. Come at me, bro. Yeah, like you know your NBA facts. I don't know if you're right or not, I but I'm I don't right. know. I don't know enough to <laughs> dispute know, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But like they obviously play up to their uh, potential. Pot they know they play up to the potential of the other team. Sure. Just a little bit more than what they're competing against. Just sometimes they get complacent. 
Right. Because they could just dominate literally everybody. Yeah, and they know that. So that's the that's thing. Part of the problem. It's like a it, it, like it's catch twenty two. Right. Because you get in the back of your mind, you get complacency, mm-hmm. and you get like, what? What's the point of me working out this extra ten minutes? Or which is very dangerous. It's like a three goal lead in hockey. Mm-hmm. So. I'm kind of nervous for Houston just because I think the Clippers were a wake-up call for Golden State. I mean, you would have thought that 31-point lead that they dropped would have been a wake-up call, but then they lost Game 5 as well. That's true. So if the Clippers can take games off them, then James Harden, who is still performing, it's not like he's fallen off or anything yeah. in the playoffs like he has previously. I think they can do it. <clears throat> I hope I so. I think we're going to have a Warrior-less finals. I hope so. LeBron-less finals. I think this is it's going to be Kawhi and Golden State. I hope I'm wrong with Golden State. I hope it's Houston, or I hope it's fucking Damian Lillard. Damn <laughs> right, man. Fucking clutch, dude. Oh, my God. Dame might be my favorite player. I want to say Kyrie. Buzzer Ky- beater, like a very small percentage three-point shot for the 50th point of He does game. whatever he wants. Ice in the veins. He's yeah. the definition. I think the only reason why he bought out that hard is because of Russ. Challenged him. Reason. Yeah. But I mean, that's what you want, right? You I want someone who can step up to the challenge and Russ not shy away from it. Pretty, pretty Russ good. shied away from the challenge. Yeah. And I like Russ so much just because I, I, I respect the effort that he puts into the game. And you game. don't you don't really see the negative parts of it, though. I'm starting to see the negative parts, mm. especially his post, uh, like the post game comments and that. He was like uh, saying that he, re- he, he hears all the criticism, but fuck you. Pretty much. Yeah. And well, he's just, he's in general pretty snotty towards the press i think uh they did him and the thunder dirty like a while back just the okc media in general mm-hmm. asked some really stupid questions him and paul george would be like next, next question just <laughs> completely ignore them and some reporters have really complained about it that's why uh i don't know if you saw it but after blake did his final press conference he walked through the room and shook the hand of every single media member. Did he? Yeah. Blake loves it. Yeah, he does. And I'm fucking ecstatic that he loves it. He had like a huge heartfelt thing after the game and all that where he'd like talk to the players of, that, of Pistons yeah. and how proud he was to play with them as a team. And That's a role model right there. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. He's become, he, I think he might be my favorite basketball player That's, just because he's, he's, he's plays for my team and he's, yeah. he's dope. As far as Russ and the Thunder go, I mean, he had 50 fewer points than Lillard on four more shots. Yeah, he's definitely not as consistent. At or all. maybe four fewer shots. There's something absolutely ridiculous like that. He's very, very inconsistent. I just don't think he... Uh, <clears throat> he's not a point guard. I think he should be a shooting guard. Mm. And he may be better off as a shooting guard where he's not the primary... Uh, the, the primary person to I don't know. I feel like he. Dish, I don't know if he. That. I don't know if he can physically function as not the ball dominator. I don't know? think so. I mean, Kobe was the ball dominator, but he wasn't the point guard. Sure, and people complained about him being selfish too. True, but he won championships. But he won championships, yeah, because like, he didn't shy away. You win championships, so if the you problem, can do whatever the fuck you want. If the problem is that he's shying away from these challenges, then I don't think a position change is going to fix that. Do you think he's shying away? Or do you think he's maybe just trying not showing, too hard and mm, it's just we're not working? He does out. seem like he's a Hulk kind of player so he's just purely on his right. crazy emotions his crazy physicality and I sometimes that works and sometimes it bites him in the ass right i think he's the kind of player that is self-motivated mm. and he relies on himself and he trusts himself more than he trusts anybody else and when he runs so, that way it's either feast or famine right and when there's uh hard times for the team he tries to put all that pressure on himself he doesn't need to sometimes it don't work out he's and got he, fucking paul george right and i mean how many of those shots did he take in the playoffs that he probably could have I'm talking shit because I didn't watch all the games, but I'm just speculating that he probably like, easily could have passed the Paul George a few yeah. times and made up and would have made like a way more competitive series. Mm-hmm. There are plenty of times where I saw him just take up a dumb three and then brick it because that's up he is builds brick houses apparently, <laughs> and then Lillard to walk back the other way and just drain in their face. And I can't imagine what that must feel like for the oh, entire team. The worst. We that's a, a six point sam- swing right there. We that's get a small nuts. sample size of an NBA the game, but I can't <sighs> imagine. <laughs> so I need to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> Hurts my soul. You have any uh, gaming shit you want to talk about? A little bit. I actually had a lot, but I feel like we skipped right over it and don't have a ton of. We had a lot of like know, movie shit and like. It's a crazy time to be alive yes. right now, honestly. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that shit really briefly. There's a game that just came out uh, on Thursday called Days Gone. It's essentially a Walking Dead game. Oh yeah, you told me about. It. Did you play it last night? I did. Yeah. Did you get fucking scared? I did not. Aww. I wouldn't say it's not like a horror game. It's a it's a PS4 exclusive. It's a zombie survival game. They're not zombies. They're diseased, quote unquote. Is it supposed to be like a scary game? 
Like uh, it's not a horror game, no. It's like a... definitely not. It's more like it's like Red Dead, except in the zombie apocalypse. Mm, that's cool. And you're a biker dude. You play a guy named Deacon St. John. You go through his story, doing flashbacks to you know how things started and where his family was, how he lost everything, things like that. So it is like a personal emotional story that you're going through, but it's in the setting of an open world where you're traveling through trying to murder these gigantic hordes of diseased freakers they're called are they are they humans or do they have like do they look like mutants and shit yeah basically they i i'm literally playing in my head like i'm in the walking dead universe and i'm just in some mountainous what area. kind of are they walking dead zombies are they night they're, living dead zombies are they resident evil zombies what i kind think are they? they're like 20 i think it's 21 days later so they sprint at you they sprint at you yes like, there's ah! Dude, Crazy. you, you got to see. You got to look up the videos for it. There's when you see like a giant horde of them seriously just like run over here. You're like, oh shit, this is gonna run the other way now, and they catch up to you because they run faster than you. Right, because they have unlimited cardio. Exactly, yeah. but they are living things. They got to go drink water. Oh, and the whole horde will go like as a as a unit to the watering hole, Jesus and they got to eat. They sleep during the day, so at night they're just wandering around. But that's when they're actually at their weakest. At night, yeah. That's but weird. there's just a lot of them. So it's interesting because you got to kind of balance, you know, your survival items, your weaponry. Like right now I have a shitty ass motorcycle, little crossbow. You Daryl, bro? I'm basically Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> I, I realized that today. I'm like, I have a crossbow. I'm a motorcycle. I'm literally Daryl. Just That's, sniping, sniping zombies in the head. I mean, there's is it fun. It is fun. The whole setting. It's getting some bad reviews right now. I think it's because a lot of people are only giving it like. 10 hours until they put in their verdict online because you know official reviewers they have a lot of shit to do i suppose so i've heard from the developers that a lot of the payoff comes later in the game when you're really you know like we're talking about with the avengers wrapping up the character's development and story so yeah a lot so, of impatient fucks basically basically yeah <laughs> but i mean i guess i can get it if you're doing 15 hours of the same shit it can get kind of boring, but I mean, yeah, it's probably, fun shit. You probably won't even get to the end then. Yeah, I doubt it. it'll be another one of those. As I'm playing, I'm like, man, I still got to finish Spider-Man and Red Dead and this now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's a really fun game. I Is it suspenseful? Like it. Do you get like some jump moments? I died today because I just, I stumbled, like I said, upon a hill and I went over it and there's a giant horde of them. I tried running around. I got on my motorcycle. They ripped me off of it. I just fucking died. Damn, they just eat you alive. Yeah, it's is it rough. Like, is it like a wasted kind of death? Or how do you die? It just kind of fades to black. I was, I'm was, i hoping that there's like some instances where you get caught in an animation or like ripping your guts out or something. I'm but, sure there might be. But so far, it's just been like you, did, you just die. When your health is there down. like uh, special ones, kind of like Resident Evil? Mm, that's a good question. So far, I've only seen the general ones, but... Not, I'm not even that far in the story myself, so I don't. I'm like tentative to get a, I mean, a verdict on it. If they're e if they're like eating and drinking and sleeping in that, they may be able to like grow or something, evolve. Oh, fuck off, and man. have like a leader come and form up from it. That could definitely happen. Another big like adversary is this government group. It's called Nero or something. I don't know. It's an acronym that stands for something. National emergency, whatever the fuck. But you know, it's your typical government bad guys. They come in, cover shit up. So I'm interested to see like what was the cause of all this because, I mean, it's they're not dead. It's not like some supernatural thing. Do you imagine? Like, I think it's possible in real life. A zombie apocalypse. I think a disease could happen. That's just. I think a disease outbreak could happen. Uh oh. That's Jack's our dog. Yeah, he's barking at something. He'll be all right. He's having fun. It's all right. Yeah. Should shut the door real quick. Go ahead. Be right back. <laughs> Entertain him on the gaming <laughs> news, Nick. Oh yeah, other gaming news. Uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes could suck my dick. <laughs> they have events every few fucking months, and you got to get like uh, the right players for each event. Right heroes, yeah. And uh, I didn't plan well. It's one of those games where it's a pay-to-win game. Obviously, yeah. it's a phone app game, and uh, I had too many hands and too many Easter baskets, basically, <laughs> instead of one Easter basket. I should have focused. Specifically on the Jedi Knight Revan character. Legendary that hero that's coming out, yeah. Right. Instead, I was focusing on my bounty hunters to get Chewbacca. I was focusing on my bounty hunter ships to get the Millennium Falcon. Mm. I was also focusing on the Jedi Knight Revan. And there was a point where I was focused on Ewoks, too. Mm. So my dumbass should have just picked one thing at a time. And now I'm in that weird purgatory where I, instead of You're kind of close to the thing. I'm close but... to everything, but I'm not going to get anything on time. <laughs> and it's like bumming me out. Like, I heard I this, like zero motivation to play the game now. I heard this great quote from Leonard Nimoy. He's not the one that made the quote, but he's just the one that read it at the time. He Who's said, that? Leonard Nimoy? 
Yeah, who's that? That's Spock from Star Trek. <laughs> Fucking kidding me. He says, if you chase two rabbits... Both will get away. You lose them both. Thank you for ruining my quote, you piece of fucking <laughs> I mean, it's not that fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it's profound. It's not that fucking... Very profound. Intelligent Thank you, Leonard. Right there. It is. It's great. But yeah, you fucked up. Much yes. akin to me fucking up. This is the same game that I think I talked about, I don't know, maybe last week, but mm. I'm trying to start over and I try to get ahead of the curve, but I ended up jumping in at the very fucking end of the curve and fucking myself, but... You're I'm actually catching up. I'm recovering. Yep. Yeah. I told you you would. I didn't believe it. I still don't. I'm not even in the top 200 yet. Me? I'm barely in the top I 200. I should be at the top 20 right now. You fucking should. salty. But you can still pre- prepare for the ships, though, which you are. So you'll get your crystals yet, from the ships that way, though. Yeah, I hope so. Remember when the first time you played the game? I don't fuck with the ships at all. I literally didn't touch them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why not? The, they were just first being introduced. They didn't have, like, the ship... Uh, you know, the hard nodes, so they weren't really useful other than just battling. And every time I battled other people, I just lost. So why the fuck would I keep doing it? It's probably you know me. I hit resistance. I, think, I said no. I think you didn't have wedge like I had wedge. I did not have so wedge. So I had the bigs and wedge duo in the beginning. I yeah. actually liked it because I was a, I didn't prepare the way Don prepared for But Spider-Man. I prepared by doing the mold that everybody does. You I did, did my, what you thought yeah. would be really fun. And I uh, conveniently had good shit people. So True. I, yeah. instead of like getting really, really good scores in squad arena, I got good scores in ships. Like I'm still like top 20 ships. Yeah. And before the Millennium Falcon, I was top five ships. Fucking That's why Millennium I was Falcon. trying to get the Millennium Falcon so bad, but it came, <laughs> that fucking event came out way too early. So I, I barely missed it. Yeah. So. That's rough. Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got to tell me. Are you finna start over now? <laughs> I thought about it. If you're willing to start over, I might start over. Maybe we can think about it. Neither here nor there. Yeah, no we'll worries, see what happens. Just talking about it in general. Yeah, that's all I got for gaming. Cool. I'll briefly run through some MMA stuff. Hell there yeah. is fights on tonight, by the way. Jacare's fighting uh, Homeboy. I forget his name. That's not how he's I, supposed I, to fight. No, he was supposed to fight Romero. Uh, well, I thought you were going to say Costa for some reason, but I heard in the news today that Paulo Costa and he Carlos got, Costa, whoever the hell else. I don't know who the other guy is, but Paulo Costa, I guess, he got suspended for six months but it's already over he already served his son oh seriously yeah and it was for a uh illegal use of an iv okay but they didn't find any type of testosterone or anything in him i mean you fucking, mm-hmm. he definitely doesn't pass mm-hmm. the eye test you know what i mean yeah and another thing too is like they want him to like yoel romero like, is that does that fight really intrigue you honestly is Cost that like, romero yeah is that like a fight like oh my god i can't wait to see that i mean it's it's definitely not going to be like the highest level of mma we're ever going to see but I mean, if you want to see two beef heads beat each other up, I hear, I hear a lot of people that like really, really cannot wait for that fight. It's and, just, and it's like they're like they're talking about it like it's a fucking Ferguson Khabib <laughs> fight, and I'm like, is he? I I I'm pretty sure your well Romero is gonna starch Paulo. I don't think, I think he is ready for a uh, your well Romero freak yet. The Whitaker Romero fights are probably the best Romero fights you're gonna get. Yeah, that's some of the highest of level fights that you'll ever see. Yeah, for sure. But uh. Yeah, he got suspended for six months, but he's actually he can actually fight now. That's pretty crazy. And then uh, the fights tonight, Mike Perry is fighting uh, Cowboy Oliveira, which will be a good oh, fight. Okay. Greg Hardy is the co-main event. Fuck Greg Hardy. Yeah. And uh, who's he fighting? I don't know, dude. Some nobody. Fight. Yeah, they're trying to get trying to build him up. Yeah. But it was like it was, it's a fight card. I'm pro- I'm gonna watch it, but it's not one that I wanted to do a lot of research on and have like an extra podcast for because I'm gonna do those for pay per views or like yeah, special there's, events. There's no like crazy ones that are coming up for a while. I mean, you got the Brazil one with the foul- next week is gonna be a good card. Who's on it? It's uh Cowboy and I Quinta. Okay. And then there's also uh Derek Brunson versus Theodoro, which I looked I did research these ones. But I don't. We don't have to go into it too. That's deep. a next week podcast. We can do like a two two for next week. Yeah. But uh, Theodoro, when I looked that fight up, he's a plus one hundred underdog against Derek Brunson, who's a minus one thirty favorite, which makes zero fucking sense. That's to really me close because Derek Brunson, he's on like a three fight losing streak, and he fucking <clears throat> he fights very recklessly. Mm, it's true. And Theodoro fights to win. He I've never heard smart. of Theodoro. Elias Theodoro. He's the guy that was the first ever ring card guy for Invicta. Because Invicta is like only women's fighting. You would know him if you've seen him. You would. Would I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one surprised me. Also, hmm. Cub Swanson's fighting Burgos. Okay. Who is a minus Burgos is a minus one sixty five favorite. Cub's a plus one thirty five underdog, which I was also I mean, thrown off of. Because yes, Cub is lost. Actually, 
Maybe Brunson has not lost three in a row. He's lost two in a row. And he's two for five in his last five. I wrote the notes down. Good correction. Cub Swanson is <laughs> Cub Swanson's lost his last three. Yeah, but who's but, he fought? Exactly. Moyakano, Frankie Edgar, and Brian Ortega. Some yeah. Nothing monsters. to slouch down about. You know what Seriously, I mean? Seriously, yeah. But here's the thing with Cub. That motherfucker was training with TJ at the training lab. Uh oh. So I'm very curious to see what kind of Cub Swanson shows up. I mean, Cub does Cub doesn't seem like the guy that would be on steroids. Yeah, TJ. I mean, TJ. Uh, if you did didn't seem hear, like if you didn't hear, well, I, all you're I saying is not surprised. Personality. In general, yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if everybody at the training lab gets popped. Fair. Like, I, like for real. It's fucked up though. I'm curious to see how, how Cub performs. If he comes back and he looks like the old Cub, I think this is a good fight to bet money on Cub to make. And some he usually money. does well when he's like pushed against the wall. And Cub he's always the performs underdog. unless it's like he's almost he was almost a Dustin Poirier before Dustin finally yeah. broke out of his shell. Mm-hmm. Like you're you, you perform amazingly until you get to the very top, and then once you get to the top, something happens. If it, whether it's mentally or if you're just not talented enough, yeah. Who knows? Gatekeepers, right? Cub is a gatekeeper, but I I don't think his time's up yet. Agreed. Also, there's fight. That's next week. Mm-hmm. This week, uh, this Saturday, also, which is today, other than the Jacare fight, Bellator mm-hmm. fights are today. Oh shit! Uh, Rory McDonald. Oh shit! He's facing John Fitch. Okay. And the uh, well, the Wellator, the Bellator, Wellator. the Bellator welterweight uh, tournament. They but need it, to call it Wellator. Yeah. <laughs> the Wellator tournament. <laughs> and the title's on the line because he's the champion for John Fitch to take, huh? Yeah. Okay. Which is interesting. Um, Rory is a four to one favorite, justifiably so. Yeah. John Fitch is the decision machine. The only way he wins typically is by decisions from wrestling people to the ground. But you can't do it, Rory. Yeah, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a tough night for Fitch. I think it's. This is, I think this is a good fight for Rory to rebound after that beatdown from Gegard. Yeah. Well, but we're gonna see where Rory's head's at because Rory is the kind of guy where his head's there. He's mm-hmm. the champion. He's the best. But when his head's not there, he's he, he's underperforms. Very, yeah. He he's very underwhelming. Compared mm-hmm. to what its potential could be, for sure. That card is actually, I think, more. I don't know if I would say more stacked than UFC, but it has almost a more high level fights. I agree. You got yeah. Phil Davis is fighting Liam McGeary, who was the welterweight uh, champion. Okay. And Phil Davis is an amazing fighter. He beat Gustafson at one point. Damn. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Yeah, no. that's how. Fun fact: Gustafson is such a like he wants to win, and he's very humble. So bad that when he got he got wrestled and finished by Phil Davis. And uh, as soon as that happened, he invited Phil Davis to his camp, and they trained together. Mm. That's K- why his wrestling got so good. That's why KD. he took John Jones Is that on. a KD reaction, or is that I a bit guess, better in MMA? I don't MMA? know if that's a cupcake move or what. I think that's better in MMA. <laughs> and then uh, Benson Henderson's fighting. He's okay, fighting a okay. guy, Adam Pico Lodi. I don't know him. But okay. Bendo's fighting, Phil Davis versus McGeary. And then uh, the women's 125-pound champ is fighting. That's the co-main event. So there's two title fights tonight. Her mm. name's Lima Lay Mark from... McFarlane? I don't know. I've been following her on like Instagram for a long time. She is a really, really good grappler. Okay. Like a very high level grappler. And she she's very humble and she's Hawaiian. She's like kinda like a Max Holloway. She's like gotcha. she's not gonna lie Just about game. Yeah, she's gaming. She's not gonna lie about her her uh her potential. Mm. Like uh she was on uh Ariel Hawani's podcast not too long ago and he was asking her, like, how do you think you would perform against Valentina Shevchenko? She's like, why? Well, I, I think I'd get destroyed standing up. <laughs> she's like, but if I get it to the ground, I bet you I can do some work. And uh, she's being humble. And she I, knows what I she's like about. Her. Yeah, and uh, she's fighting too. So there'll be a couple of good fights on tonight. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a great card. Yeah, and other news. Darren Till, <laughs> have you heard about your boy? <sighs> I heard a little bit about it. Fall from grace, huh? Or do you think this is just like a I don't understand what's up with the guys from the UK. They, will they get some money? They just go fucking wild. You can take the... The boy out of Liverpool. You can't take the <laughs> Liverpool out of the boy. Exactly. <laughs> so, alleged, I mean, it's not even allegedly. I'm pretty sure it's like yeah, fact it's, now. Yeah. He, Darren Till and his friends destroyed a hotel, like a hotel room, but had fire extinguishers, push, fucking shit up. Called a taxi while the taxi was putting their shit in their taxi cab trunk. Till got in the driver's seat and fucking <laughs> took off. <laughs> Went to a different hotel. Oh and long story short, they got arrested, fined, and, uh, not looking good for Till. No. It doesn't seem like he's uh he's bouncing back pretty well from these two devastating losses. Do you think this is like an immediate reaction to that or it could just maybe be a bad just, night out, dude. Yeah, he's young. Got a little He's young. He's a fucking fighter. He's one of the best fighters in the world. And you have money now, you got fame now. 
and you're yeah. just balling. I mean, you, you fucking, you go out, like, I, I can only imagine me if I was in his shoes and I was partying. <laughs> like, I, I would be way worse. That's why I'm For like, sure. I'm one of those people that are like, Remember Not how much so quick I, to judge. I right and remember how I was like a Justin Bieber defender for the longest time after all the little shit that yeah. he did to everybody hey like spinning, him spinning on, on a fan or th- egging a house but mm-hmm. what did he ever do that was like so like completely unforgivable? Like he didn't beat anybody or anything. Right. So I was like, you know what? He's all right by me because if I was in his shoes and I was the most popular kid in the world and I had all these bitches that wanted to be with me. I could not even imagine the demon that would come out of Nick Wachowski. <laughs> I'm not even lying don't here. Don't want to imagine. Uh, yeah, it would. It would. It'd be bad news bears. I agree. So, I'm. I'm. I'm giving Darren Till a pass <laughs> on this one. I just hope it doesn't continue. I hope he kind of like wakes up, kind of just stays in the gym for a little bit. Don't turn into a John Jones. Yeah, you have an outlet. Don't go. Yeah drinking and you want to drink a party every once in a while or go party but be safe have a couple people with you that are going to be able to that you trust that will be able to kind of calm you down oddly enough the diaz's seem to be the perfect uh Ew, they just experts at balancing party life and yeah training life yeah speaking of them i wish there was news but <laughs> to throw it out to the universe i wish i uh the only thing i've heard about the diaz bros was uh dan hardy made a prediction that he thinks nate diaz is gonna fight at the end of the year card with connor he thinks that's when connor's gonna return it's gonna be the trilogy hmm. i mean if i'm connor and i'm the ufc i don't see why you wouldn't make that fight right now you want to make it with nate instead did you say Nick or Nate? Nate's not Nick. It's I like could have swore you said trilogy. Nick. Dude. If I said Nick, I, I, I definitely meant the same. I didn't hear you say trilogy. But, but uh, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, dude, Nick would be a rough night for Kyle. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, surprised about that news. I don't like that. Actually, who knows? He has a phone. Mm-hmm. God knows, like four or five years. Get if he is how he used to be, he'd be a rough night for Connor. Nate, or if Connor's like he used to be. Then you, we got an amazing fight. There you go. I agree. Connor and Nate. Make it. Book it. It'll Do be, it. Yeah, but I don't. Him or the Cowboy fight were the only fights that I would be okay with for Conor to come back and get like a bounce back win. Mm. Because if he comes back, and this is my personal opinion, you can you can disagree, which I know you're going to. But if he comes back against Khabib, he's losing. If he yeah. comes back against Al Kukui, I think he has pretty decent odds to win that fight, probably more than most people, just so because Al Kukui so far because Al Kukui has. A weak chin where he's chinny where mm-hmm. he gets clipped but he always recovers but that's almost always because he's phenomenal on the ground and people don't really want to go to the ground with him or they swarm him i but think connor will be a little bit more precise and he's accurate. more patient once right. he gets to the ground there right but if he gets to the ground with tony it's going to be bad just as bad with tony as it would be for qb not mm-hmm. necessarily not the, just the, bad, not the ground and pound but he's going to get submitted yeah yeah so that's a very tough fight for Connor. All these fights are tough for Connor. I haven't disagreed with Al anything you've Iacunta, said so far. Very tough fight for Connor. I, I think Al would fuck Connor up. I really do. I mm-hmm. think people are underestimating Al still to this day. I don't understand it. Because we don't haven't really seen him do very much. He I fucking, think it's pretty understandable. He, he's the only person that's gone like, barely survived against Khabib. He didn't barely survive. He made sir, he made Khabib look beatable. It's, I mean it wasn't like the most competitive thing in the world. And he took that fight on a one day notice. Hope you realize that. That's like saying Tom Brady only threw for 250 yards what a scrub. No, I disagree. I disagree with that. Khabib was dominating everybody. Like where is when is I Quinta shown that he is like world beating He beat stuff? Kevin Lee pretty convincingly. Okay, I forgot about that one. What else? What else? <laughs> I'm asking you like generally. <laughs> he fucking beat up Jorge Masvidal. I don't recall that one either. At 155? Mm-hmm. He's beat a lot of people, dude. Okay. A lot of well, this are. is why we don't know. Well, a lot, a few of those fights were back before him and the UFC guys. Exactly. Him, but I'm telling you, I don't sleep on L. I okay. think he'd beat Counter up. He's fighting Cowboy next week. I think he's gonna fuck Cowboy up. Mm. I I feel bad because every time I have a Cowboy fight and I make a prediction, I almost always pick against Cowboy. <laughs> I'm not a Cowboy hater. You I just, love him actually. <laughs> I really like Cowboy. I just there's certain fights he's I don't think he's gonna win. Yeah. Yeah. Like Masvidal. Anybody who talks shit to him, I I got Cowboy losing those fights. I had Cowboy losing to uh. Homeboy, he just fought Alex something. I forget his name. Just because I thought that he was a very good up and comer, and I mm-hmm. thought he was gonna uh, take Cowboy. And this is Cowboy's first fight back at 155. That was my opinion. But he's fighting Ally Quinta now. He ain't fucking fighting just the up and comer 155. He's fighting somebody who's already there. True. And I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a bad night. It's gonna be like a Darren Till night for him. Was this a tangent about Connor? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> 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 Point is. 
Connor has very stiff competition. The top six of lightweight are hard fights for him. My okay, you said that I would disagree with what you said. I didn't disagree with anything you said. My expectations. You think Al would beat Connor? Okay, no, I don't agree with that. But okay, I, I guess think, I'm, I'm not gonna distrust you just because I haven't seen. Anna I think Quinta Kevin Lee is a very hard fight for Connor as well. I agree. My expectation for Connor is to come fight Nate Diaz, barely beat him, and then retire from the game. That would that'd be ideal. But I think, I think he loses anything Connor. else. That's not gonna be Connor. I think. It depends. Did you hear he allegedly made a billion dollars off of his uh, whiskey sales? No. Yeah, dude. A billion? Maybe it's like, maybe he didn't make it, but he has a billion sales. Maybe that's just the revenue. Sales. Or is, is rev- revenue isn't the same as gross income. Is gross income what I'm thinking of? Conor McGregor, proper number 12 whiskey is just as bad as you'd expect. Damn. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad. I don't know. Oh, here it is. No, never mind. I heard it's just a wood, a mid-range whiskey at a high-range price. <laughs> but you buy it for the brand. These are just some, these are like Beats headphones. You don't buy it because they're good. Know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Report: Conor McGregor on Irish whiskey sales surpassing one billion in the U.S. So it's just sales. Was there ever any doubt? I turned whiskey to a bill. I turned <laughs> human cockfighting to four point two. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it, I guess. Certainly po- pulls no punches. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I think Counter is one foot in, one foot out, and I respect that. He did his thing. Yeah, I, that's what he wanted to do. He said on that one tweet. I think that, uh, like I said, I don't think he's a necessarily a good person anymore. I mean, you've had this debate a million mm-hmm. times, mm-hmm. and uh, I think his head's not into the game mm-hmm. nearly as much as it should be to fight these savages. So we'll just leave it at that. He made a billion dollar sales for whiskey. Good for him. I still would love to try. I haven't tried it yet. I don't even see it anywhere. I don't, I don't see it either. Yeah, where's this U.S. sales coming from, <laughs> personally? <laughs> Gotta but be I, online. I, I'm a very, very strong Jameson drinker. Very, very strong. That's my drink of choice. Thing drinks. So I will try Proper 12, and I will give you guys an actual review of it, a real one, one day. <laughs> Stay we'll tuned get there. on the next episode of Bleach. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Bleach. Bleach. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed, make sure you rate. Comment, subscribe, share the shit, let everybody know about it, you know. You know the deal. Check out our website, pnacast.com. We have all our episodes on there now. Fully up to date. We're getting there. We're getting there. YouTube's up to date, too. Yeah. It will be. I just put myself under pressure to get it Yeah, we got got merch on there and everything. If you want to send us any notes or any feedback that you have on the episode, you can go to the contact page on the website. We'll read it. We'll talk shit about it. It's whatever. Don't be afraid, though. Yep. We're out of here, guys. Peace out.